one man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. indeed folks welcome 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 to series three that's three of blue please here on wow radio with myself total biscuit i'm so excited to be back on air as you can probably tell i'm bouncing in my chair and hopefully you are too (sighs) it is actually quite good to be back and i did say i'd never do this show again but you should have learned by now that i'm a big fat liar so you know (laughs) if you took me seriously i'm not gonna accept any responsibility for that whatsoever, that is clearly your fault. And if you want to complain, you can express your dismay by emailing the at gmail.com, as you can do throughout the show, every show, in between the shows, if you're listening to the podcast, if you're not listening to the podcast. If you've never heard this show before, you can still email us, themurloc at gmail.com. Now, what have I got coming up in the show for you today? Well, I got into the Wrath beta. You know what that means, kids. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, yes. It's going to be Wrath for weeks and weeks and months and possibly years if we keep this development time up, because I can tell you that. They certainly have not fixed everything. Oh, no. I'll tell you what's good, what's not, and dissecting as to the whys and wherefores during this show, including commentary on Death Knights and why Death Knights are not a hero class. Also, I've got a soapbox coming up later on. I was without the internet for a week, as you're well aware, after I moved house, and what that generally means is I get very, very bored. Now, either I get obsessed with a game, like the time when I didn't have the internet for a month in Sheffield and I played Oblivion for 390 hours. Sometimes I decide to get a little bit creative. Now, in my time outside of the internet world, I took the opportunity to redesign the arena system entirely. All of it. And I wrote a 4,000 word dissertation on how to fix it, as well as an audio companion. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. And we're going to be starting ourselves a little campaign. Just see the power of the listeners and the people. And, you know, try and get a community movement going behind this idea, assuming you guys actually like it at all. I've spent a long time on it. I hope you do. If you don't, email me themole at gmail.com. Now, I'm also going to be introducing a new feature for this series. Yes, a new feature. And it's got its own drop in. And it's horrible. It's the illusion of choice. Yes, there you go. It's the illusion of choice. Now, the illusion of choice is going to give you the opportunity to email in every week and pick the topic. You're going to have one chance during each show to pick a topic. And I will, completely unprepared, of course, go into that topic and deal with it for a 15-minute stretch. Yes, I will. So, the illusion of choice. You will get the chance to do so in this show, in fact. Usually I'd say, uh-uh, can't do that. No, 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 because it's my first show. But no, hit me with your best shot, as far as I'm concerned. You can email the at gmail.com. That is the at gmail.com, subject line, illusion of choice, to pick the topic you would like me to cover for the last 15 minutes of the show. And I will do that. That is a promise. I'll get a topic, and I will cover it. So that's the illusion of choice. I'll play the horrible drop-in again for you. It's the illusion of choice. Yes, I, I wanted like a Casper scary ghost thing, but it, it didn't really work out. I'm not a very good Casper. Now, for those of you asking what features will be coming back, I'll be introducing them gradually, and the reason is, well, I didn't have internet until an hour ago, so how on earth did you expect me to get everything done? I do have an update news for you. It's a nice, long update news for you, and it'll be coming up a little bit later in the show. And next week, Ask the Murloc shall be returning along with... No, I'm not doing Rat on the Forums, guys. Sorry. I, I, I might. Maybe. And what I will also be doing is we shall be featuring Terpster songs, but not sung by Terpster. That's going to be coming next week. So you're going to have to listen to that. And of course, those of you who have tuned in for the first time or are just tuning in because of the contest we are running right now will be aware that we are giving away... Not one, not two, but 20 WWI cards. That is 20. Two zero. That is 10 times two. It is 40 divided by two. It is 100 divided by five. It is 20. Yes. WWI cards. What do they give you? Beta access. Not only that, but they also give you the Tyrael Mini Vanity Pet. Yes, you can have your little Tyrael following you around. Now, this is the biggest contest right now in the World of Warcraft community, and everyone else is doing contests that are way smaller. Ooh, we're giving away a beta key. Ooh, it's one WWI card. Here, have my sock. No! We give away 20 WWI cards because we are just that epic. Yes, I did just say. Epic! <sighs> yeah. 
You know what? I've, I've been waiting so long to get it out of my system, really. It's like it, it builds up inside you. And you hide it away and you try and push it into a little ball, but it, it just grows and grows and grows and eventually it bursts out of your chest. Like like can a chest burster thing. Now I better get on with the show, hadn't I? But first, I would like to ask you for a little favor. That's everyone listening on podcast and everyone listening live, and we do have a lot of listeners right now. If you're not already in the IRC channel, we have an IRC channel, and it's full of people, and most of them aren't stupid, although you probably spot the ones that are within about five seconds of joining. IRC.MMOIRC.com. That's IRC.MMOIRC.com. Hash or pound wow radio. That is hash or pound wow radio. And if you don't have an IRC client where you are right now, you can actually use the one on our front page. Go to WCRadio.com. Click the IRC chat button at the top of the screen. Our front page is wonderful. It has all sorts of little bits of information. But that's not the request I was going to ask you to do. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. You see, Blue Police has been flagging a little bit in digs recently, and it's more of a matter of pride, really. Digs for shows on the podcast page, well, not a lot of people come from dig. I think our total, total, is 0.3%. 0.3% of our referrals every month come from dig. Now, we're sitting at about 550, and that's not really acceptable. I think we can do a lot better than that. In fact, I think we could probably get 1,000 digs by the time the week's out. What do you reckon? Now, how do you dig? Go to dig.com. Go to dig.com or go to our shows page. You'll see a little dig button there. Go to the podcast section and find yourself Blue Please. It's on the front page of the gaming podcast sections and you dig it. You can register. It takes about 20 seconds to do and dig the show. You can also go to iTunes. And if you would like to review the show, please, by all means, be honest, be constructive. I can take it. I'm a hard man. Yes. 23 years growing up in the ghetto of Spennymoor. Which it was actually a ghetto, I must point out, but it really doesn't sound that way, does it? It sounds like a nice little quaint village. Until you deal with the drugs and all that stuff, but never mind. Now, that is all out of the way, thankfully. So I'm going to get on with my first topic of the day. Yes, first topic of the day is Death Knights. Death Knights. Death Knights. Now, when I first heard about the Death Knight class, I was kind of excited. And then I had a look at it again and I thought, well, wait, wait a minute, what is all of this? Now... Since the start of WoW, and I do mean the start, the very start, there's always been murmurings. And I do say murmurings because there's never really been anything concrete until recently. And the term that was the subject of the murmur was hero class. Yes, hero class. Now, what is hero class? Well, if any of you played any pen and paper RPGs or anything like Neverwinter Nights or any of the D&D based games, or in fact actually pretty much any RPG, a hero class is one specific thing. A hero class is something that you progress onto after you are pretty much exhausted the leveling and experience line for the original class that you picked. Yes, that is true. That that is what it is. And D&D particularly does this very, very well. Now, what's the purpose of it? The purpose is to allow your class to advance to another level which is either more specialized or otherwise more exotic. Mm -hmm. So, Let's just take an example. Pulling out of Total Biscuits Pen and Paper RPG that I just created on the back of this receipt. Well, what is this receipt for, anyway? I don't even like that. Ugh. Anyway. Total Biscuits Pen and Paper RPG says, You are a mage. You get to level 20. What happens at level 20? You get to progress as a hero class. You get a variety of different paths to choose from. You could be a pyromancer, a hydromancer, all of this other good stuff, a necromancer. And that's your hero class. You sacrifice some of the general use of your class, some of the all-around utility and the flexibility to become something more powerful yet more specialised, or otherwise more exotic, something a little bit weird, yeah? Your standard classes, your warrior, your priest, your mage, they all upgrade to, you know, barbarian or crusader or anything like that. That's how, at least that's the traditional way of viewing a hero class. Now, of course, you might come and back to me and say, well, that's only pen and paper RPGs. Well, you might think that, of course, if you hadn't played, oh, I don't know, pretty much anything by Bioware, which gives you the option of hero classes, prestige classes, stuff like that. Knights of the Old Republic 2, prime example. Mass Effect, more recent example. Even the D&D games, Neverwinter Nights, also give you hero classes and all that kind of thing. There's plenty of games, plenty of computer games specifically, that actually give you the option of creating a hero class. Now... 
What gets me about the fact that they brought hero classes into the game is the fact that they didn't bring hero classes into the game. They brought hero class into the game, singular. Now, I'll probably get into the silliness of this a little bit later on, but the problem I specifically have, more than anything else, more than the whole, oh, well, it's going to be Flavor of the Month class, oh, well, there's going to be too many of them, oh, because everyone can get them, you know, everyone can play them, and the fact of the matter is that nobody's going to be able to get into a guild as a Death Knight. You know, it's going to be a pretty worthless alt that's only going to be used for farming dailies. The real problem I've got with it is the fact that it isn't a hero class. It's not. It isn't a hero class. What is it a logical progression of? The answer is it's not at all. It's not a logical progression of anything. It's another class. Now, I'm not complaining about the hero class. It's uh, Sorry, not the hero class itself, but the Death Knight. The Death Knight is fine. As a class, while it is at the moment, of course, OP. And let's face it, who didn't see that one coming? Oh, they've introduced a new class after three and a half years. Oh, and it's overpowered. There's a shocker. I can't say I was particularly stunned by that. But... The problem I've got with it is not the fact that it is OP, and I don't even have a problem with the class. I think the class is really nicely designed. It's a hell of a lot of fun to play, and hopefully when you guys get into the beta or this little contest thing, I say little contest, (laughs) once you get into the beta, you'll be able to try the Death Knight out, and you'll find the starting zone is one of the most wonderfully awesome crafted things you've ever seen. Oh, You might think that I'm being a little bit negative about the game, but to be honest, it's only because I like the game an awful lot, and there's a lot to like about Wrath, but I have to say the implementation of hero classes was not one of them. Now, you might say, well, you're just talking about principle here. You know, what is in a name, really? Well, the problem with a name is the expectation attached to the name, especially when it has historical context. And by historical context, I, of course, mean the context of pen and paper RPGs and past role-playing experiences, whether or not they be pen and paper, tabletop, or video games. The expectation of a hero class is something that is completely different than what it is implemented in Wrath at the moment. The expectation is specialization. The expectation is more exotic. Now, yes, the, the Death Knight is definitely exotic. There's no two ways about that. It's got a very exotic way of looking at particular things. The problem I've got with it is not the fact that it is exotic in itself, but that it is not a logical progression from anything. We can have a look at the classes. You could say, well, it's a logical progression from Warriors. Well, it actually really isn't. Yes, it can tank, but it doesn't tank in the same way. It's a logical progression from Germans. No, it's not that either. It's a logical progression from Paladins. No, it's not that either. No, it's not a logical progression from anything, and it seems capable of doing an awful lot of things. Now, it disappoints me, the fact that this has come in like this, because we know for a fact, I think we can probably surmise at least 99% certainty that there will not be another hero class until the expansion after Wrath. Now, if it's taken an entire expansion to release a new patch, logically, we could draw the conclusion that it's not something they're going to be introducing in patch content. No, not at all. I mean, why would they do that? There's money to be had, and the Death Knight was billed as the biggest selling point of Wrath. And that confuses me more than anything, really. It's like, a new class is the biggest selling point of an expansion, which allows you to add on to your existing character. So you're going to add on to your existing character by rolling a new one. But, but, uh, 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 how? How does that operate? I mean, how does that work? It's the same with the problem that I had with them introducing new races in the Burning Crusade. For some reason, people think that's a selling point. It did. I mean, there was so much excitement over Blood Elves and Draenei. There really was. And back in the day, I think I was still doing Blue Plays around the time, and I said, why? I asked you, well, these are not pieces of content. These are merely a little extras that serve no practical purpose as regards to the advancement of your character. That's the problem I had with them. Because I could get no use out of them. I don't roll alts, yeah? I have one character. Well, that's not entirely accurate. I have two characters. I have two characters. Bye, Orion. Sorry, that was my son there. He's off to go to his Nana's house. Which is unfortunate, because I'd have quite liked him to stay here and comment on Death Knights, but maybe we'll bring him on next show. Now, it didn't help me at all. The fact that they brought Draenei and Blood Elves into the game. Yes, it affected me because when I was playing a Horde character at the time, I suddenly have access to Paladins. The thing is, that did not require the addition of a new race. Indeed, a lot of time and effort was spent putting those zones in. Zones which I will never see, because I don't want to roll another character. I have a mage on US side, I have a mage on EU side. One is Horde, one is Alliance, they're both the same level. And I am only interested in playing mages. I don't care about any other class at all. I mean, 
don't ever think that I am unbiased because I am. I am so biased. I really am. Because I love my mage, yeah, and I'm not liking the implementation of that at the moment, but we'll come on to that in a later section of the show. The fact of the matter is that races did not advance my character, and neither do Death Knights. Yes, you might say, well, they changed the group dynamic, well, they changed the raid dynamic. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, all that does is give me yet another class I have to compete with for raid spots. And considering the current space and requirements of 25-man raids... Those spaces and those spots are going to be few and far between. And I'm not a big fan of that. Of course, I want to get into raids. And I want to get into raids on the basis of my usefulness, rather than on the basis of who I am or what position I happen to have in any guild at the time. That's not a fair and balanced way of allocating raid slots and dealing with yet another class in there is going to make things difficult. So, I guess my conclusion on that has got to be that Death Knights are very, very cool. Exceptionally cool. And you will get to play them in the beta if you get, if you get in there. Just seriously, give them a try. They're very fun to play. The problem is, I like my mage, and I have no way to advance it other than the usual everyday run-of-the-mill ways. When I come back to the break, I'll be talking about what's the same and what's different in Wrath of the Lich King. I'm going to play some Captain Dan for you right now. This is Dead Minds Battle, and I'll be right back after this. You're listening to Blue Please. My name is Total Biscuit. This is WoW Radio. Keep listening for your chance to win WWI cards. Enjoy. (laughs) 